On January 15, 1975, the new National Farmers Organization launched a completely new grain system, the R6 Contract for Sale of Grain. The system was developed on the following concepts. One, we must have a system that will take us from where we are as unorganized farmers subservient to the old market system to controlling the price and marketing of our own grain. This system must have the capability of delivering the right quality to the right location on a timely basis. Two, it must be simple, easy to use, easy to explain, and flexible enough to adjust to anything the trade might throw at it. Three, it must take care of the needs of the members from now until we reach our goal. The system can handle farmers' cash needs, the need to hold and build a price, and be able to have farmers work together. Four, it must build confidence and trust with the members. Five, it must train people how to work together to gain their goals. Six, it must give the member control over his grain, authorizing it for sale and retaining ownership through delivery to the final buyer. Seven, it must be able to replace or neutralize the grain trade system and stabilize the industry through orderly marketing and flow of grain. Eight, it must accept, contain, and implement our 30% blocking program. The steps are, first of all, block and handle 30% through the nationwide collection, dispatch, and delivery system. B, call no larger than 10 county meetings, vote on our price. C, announce that price. And finally, D, tie down written contracts based on cost and profit. The ninth point, it must have the respect of the buyer by developing an excellent performance record. And last, it must finally maintain cost contracts on a long-term basis. The National Farmers Organization grain system is broken down into three departments area office management, grain accounting, and the grain department. Area office management is responsible for document control and the receipt and disbursement of member information. Grain accounting is responsible for the collection of funds from the buyer and the dispersal of those funds to the membership through the Minnesota Grain Trust. We have seven grain accounting offices located across the country to expedite the collection and dispersal of those funds. These are, uh, starting from the eastern part of the United States, Salina, Ohio, Clarksville, Tennessee, Kansas City, Missouri, Andover, Illinois, Minneapolis, Minnesota, Tualatin, Oregon, and Hanford, California. We also have 14 area management offices and two satellite offices nationwide. The third department, the grain department, has two primary responsibilities, blocking and bargaining members' production and assisting members in the delivery of the grain to the buyer. We have 25 area grain directors covering the major grain producing areas of the United States. Look for your area and get to know your staff. The new National Farmers Organization grain system is divided into two main sections designated as Section 1 and Section 2. All grain positioned in Section 1 is in a for sale position, either for immediate spot sale or for close position block selling with other members. The grain moving through this section is used to take care of the cash flow needs and the emergency situations any member might have. And by moving in blocks, we have the possibility of building the market into a stronger price position. The grain moving through Section 1 teaches members the price advantage and power of orderly marketing, teaches and trains members to work together, to use their system, and to break the old habit of serving another system. Section 1 is the end of the contract that carries the day-to-day -day business that must and can, through increased usage, develop our ability to handle more and more production. Section 2 of the new National Farmers Organization grain system has a completely different function from Section 1. The member may sign grain into this section of the grain contract for sale and no one except the owner of the grain can reposition it from Section 2 to Section 1 or to a sales position. 
Section 2 becomes a kind of grain savings account, but under contract to be sold through the National Farmers Organization when it is moved. In truth, it becomes a part of the National Farmers Organization grain inventory. A member may sign acres in Section 2 of the grain contract for sale. These acres are converted to bushels when harvested. These acres may be signed for any number of years in advance and can be used to offset the effect of the numbers game, which is used by the industry to depress our grain prices, reminding the USDA and the traders that all visible grain is not available, that there are now two piles of grain, yours along with other NFO members, and the grain of the unorganized. As members commit their grain production to the NFO on the G2000R6, the contracts for sale are forwarded to the marketing area office and entered into the system as part of the 30% block. When members are ready to sell or put a block together for bargaining, they call their county grain coordinator, area grain staff, or the area office to authorize movement of their grain. This signal puts into motion a system of checks and balances to ensure that no member's production is blocked unless the member has signed a contract for sale of grain and has sufficient volume available to cover the sale request and in fact has authorized the sale of that grain. The area office will then block the member's grain and transmit the block to the home office. These blocks may include grain from one or more members. Each block is put through the computer system, and when the green light comes on, the block then is given to bargaining. At this point, the grain is available for sale. Sounds long, not really. It only takes a few short minutes. When a bargainer has made a sale, the grain department prepares a buyer contract. This contract goes to credit for approval to ensure that grain sold is being sold to buyers who have the ability to pay. The sale is then returned to area office management where the sale information is transmitted to the appropriate area office. When the area office receives the sales transmittal, the member's sale notification and bills of lading are prepared which are needed to instruct the trucker for proper delivery and the buyer on proper application and payment. The National Farmers Organization grain system has five primary bargaining offices and four satellite offices nationwide to bargain for our NFO members' production. These offices are located at Clarksville, Tennessee, Corning, Iowa, Minneapolis, Minnesota, Great Falls, Montana, Hanford, California, Dwight, Illinois, Pittsburgh, Kansas, West Fargo, North Dakota, and Columbus, Nebraska. We handle four types of grain contracting. Immediate delivery contracting, which covers members' cash needs or unforeseen expenditures, as well as taking advantage of short-term market demands. Second, nearby 30-day delivery contracting is the normal grain movement under the orderly marketing program. Under this movement, members block and sell their production together, moving their production directly to the ultimate user where possible. Third is future delivery, 60, 90, 120 day contracting. Many times disparities exist in markets where grain is in demand for deliveries in the future or members working together sell grain to floor the market. Future delivery contracting gets the job done. Fourth is pre-harvest. The NFO grain program is set up for each member to sell up to 25% in truckload lots on at least five different sales prior to harvest. Historically, harvest time has the lowest market of any throughout the year. But many farmers are forced to sell part of their production because of a lack of storage or for cash needs. By selling part of their production prior to harvest, farmers are not forced to accept low or depressed market prices. Your grain system is commanding respect from the industry with experienced personnel bargaining with your production. Many of our bargainers have gained valuable experience within the trade and are now using this knowledge for the benefit of the family farmer. 
Your sales confirmation is the only farmer confirmation that is accepted and signed by the major buyers where farmers control and own the grain passing through it. In the daily movement of grain, we utilize all three primary modes of transportation. Truck, rail, and bar. We have barge loading points on all the major United States navigable river systems. These include the Ohio, the Cumberland, the Illinois, the Mississippi, the Missouri, and the Arkansas rivers. Two additional barge loading points available to our members are on the Chesapeake Bay at Salisbury, Maryland, and on the Snake River at Clarkston, Washington. Our members currently have over 60 NFO grain accumulation points or throughput facilities under a signed agreement that are available to handle our members' production and to ship grain out of low-priced areas when necessary. We also have over 100 trackside loading points and other throughput facilities that are available for our members to use when and if it's necessary. We have the capability to ship direct export grain, either to the buyer's port of call, whether it be the EEC, common market countries, Eastern European countries, Far East and South America, or FOB vessel. The members of the National Farmers Organization have made direct export shipments of corn, soybeans, and wheat. We have the capability of shipping from the New Orleans Gulf Texas Gulf, Duluth, Minnesota, at the head of the lakes, the Pacific Northwest, and California export points. The direct export market is only part of the total markets available to us as NFO members. Domestic consumer markets play an important part in the movement of grain, and these markets also are available to us as feeders, processors, millers, and crushers. There's one thing that the NFO offers you as an NFO member that a farmer can't find anywhere else in the industry. That's guaranteed payment and a trust system that is designed to eliminate any motivation to mishandle grading or weighing of your production committed for sale through your organization. How does it work? When you deliver your production to the buyer, which may be through one of the NFO member's facilities where it's reloaded or hauled directly to the buyer by truck or rail, the buyer makes payment for your production, not to NFO, but to the NFO member's grain trust, a separate entity from NFO. The trust then has to distribute those proceeds directly to you, not to anyone else. The grain contract for sale is the document that tells the trust how to distribute those proceeds. You authorize deductions to the National Farmers Organization and other payments for trucking, rail or barge transportation, as well as throughput where necessary, which is the income we receive to operate on. The balance then goes to you. It either goes to you or has to stay in the trust. You're submitted with a certified audit every year that shows you the condition of the trust. If there's a difference, you will know it from that audit. In addition, you have the availability of credit department with trained people with years of experience in credit. That training prevents people in this organization from being subjected to selling to a buyer who is a high credit risk. But sometimes buyers do default, even after severe credit checks, and that's why there's a reserve system built into the trust. This reserve is there to pay members who do not receive their money because of a buyer default. Now, you'll have to admit, that's quite a system, isn't it? You've just taken the mini tour through the new National Farmers Organization's grain system. This system offers you an opportunity to price your production in the marketplace, but it can't do it without you and your production together. 
Farm power is putting enough grain together so that the trade can't fill their rail cars, barges, or vessels without coming to NFO members first, and that's when we'll price our product. My friend, the time is now for farmers to flex their clout through organized production in the marketplace. What's your decision? Yes, I'm for farm power, and here's my production to back it up. Now, how about you?